Hey, this is Urban Dub. I'm going to talk you through why I use Contact, how I've used Contact, and why I think you should use Contact. So on the screen you've got three instances of my new Contact instrument. It's taken from my new sample pack, Hardware Bass. So let's have a listen to the sounds with some drums behind it. <laughs> So now I'm going to take you through this contact instrument. I'm going to show you all the different parameters and why I decided to use them. So on the screen we've got three instances. I'm going to close two of them. We're just going to focus on this one here called Bin Man. So I'm going to create the loop in Ableton, make it shorter, just so we focus on this instrument. So let's start from the left. Portamento. X is polyphonic, M is monophonic, and L is legato. And you have your glide function here. I've added two filters, a low pass and a high pass with resonant peaks. I've also added some reverb where you've got the amount and the size here and a high pass filter. You've got the usual ADSR and on the right here we have two extra functions. First it's looping, add a bit of pitch bend and you've got a random function. This dice here if you press it it automatically changes all the parameters across the synth. I'm not going to do it now because I want to focus on this patch. So down at the bottom we have unison, that's how many voices you have, detune amount, and the spread, the stereo. So let's add a bit. So let's put the loop on as well, and add some pitch bend. A better example would be using this Reese patch. So I'm going to set the unison to 5, Detune about 50% and spread about 50%. Put the looping on. So without the unison. Cool. So let's go back to the first patch the bin man patch. Now let's delve deeper, let's actually have a look inside contact, see what's going on. If you've never used contact before, it can be very daunting. It's a very powerful and vast sampler. So let's start at the top. You have your instrument options. I don't use it too much, so I'm not even going to go into that. You've got your group editor, which we'll come back to. You've got your mapping editor, which is really important. It's how you load your samples in and map them across the keyboard. And you've got your wave editor, where you can see here, where you can create loop points um, and even edit the audio. The script editor, I'm going to let my friend Rich Cresswell talk about. But for now, let's go back to the group editor. So with this particular patch, because we have a loop function, I needed two groups. One for playing the single one shot, and one for the loop. So essentially I had to add the same sample twice. I map it across the keyboard. All of my samples which I made from this bass pack were all done in F. So I dragged it in, whether it was from here, in the browser, or the browser on your desktop, dragged it into the F note. I did the same here with the one shot. Simple as that. And from there, I'd go back to my looping group, click on that, click on this, and then I can go down and create a loop. So, so it's quite straightforward. I hit this button here, and then I can create a loop. You have a crossfade here to get rid of any pops. So, you know, 500 is a good starting point. And if you really want to get into detail and look at the crossovers, you can click on that. If we come down a bit more, you have your source sections. So you have your sampler, DFD, Wavetable, and these time machines are really useful when you want to keep the speed of a sample when you're going across the keyboard. Anyone that's used samplers before knows as you play higher or lower, things speed up or slow down. With a time machine activated, it keeps the things in time. So let's go to the Pro. Without it, you'll notice a bit more of a Reese effect, the old school speed up. Let's come down a bit further. So you have your filters here. These are added in the group insert effects. So now let's go back up, close the editor of contact, and you'll see the corresponding filters here. You'll see the loop function, the ADSR, you've got your unison here, and obviously you've got your portamento and filters. So to design the front end, I needed some help. So I'd mapped out all the features that I wanted in my head. Um, I didn't need too much. Essentially, I wanted to loop stuff, add some filters, ADSR, and add some reverb. 
and a bit of Paul Mento. So I tried for ages to um, create my own script, the front end and the back end of this contact instrument. Um, I got pretty much nowhere. So I got in contact with this very talented guy, Rich Cresswell, and he actually designed the front end and the back end of this instrument for me. This is all done in the script editor here on the right. I'm going to click on it. You can see what Rich has done. There's a vast amount of code and also he's designed the graphics. So now I'm going to hand it over to Rich and Rich can explain how he designed this contact. Thanks very much. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is give you a very brief overview of the design from concept to finished product. First of all, we need to create a design. We did this in Photoshop. I'm going to walk you through the layers as they were built. We started off with a blank page to the dimensions of the instruments. Then we added in a background and we're going to take a look at that now. Once that was done, we needed to add in some text layers so we could see how everything was going to line up. With the text layers now added, it was time to add some branding. And lastly, we needed to work out where the controls were going to be placed, ready for construction. And there we go. What we're going to do now is we're going to pop into Adobe After Effects so we can have a look at one of the animations for the reverb. OK, so inside After Effects, we're going to have a look at one of the animations, which has three layers which form the control. What we're going to do is just move the playhead. And as we can see, the animation is nice and smooth and ready for exporting to a PNG sprite. So let's take a look at some of the scripts. OK, OK, it might look a little bit confusing, but trust me, it works. The idea here with the script is that we can take the images and the animations that we've created, get it all packaged, load it into contacts, and deliver you a creative instrument. And now back to the main man. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, <laughs> it's not something I would ever profess to ever be able to do. I'm not a scripting guy. Um, I'm a, you know, I am, I'm a musician, so DJ, drummer, programmer, whatever, but I definitely can't type code. So yeah, this is a real basic sort of overview of contacts and how we design this instrument. The reason I wanted a contact instrument as part of this bass pack was so I could use it myself, to be fair. Um, I wanted to play some of the basses across the keyboard. I wanted to be able to pitch things, add effects on the fly, and be more creative than just working with audio. There's over 250 samples in this pack. I use various different synths from Serum to Access Virus to a Moog Slim Fatty. Run it through various bits of outboard hardware, guitar distortion pedals, mastering grade gear, um, loads and loads of stuff, some custom made preamps, just so I could be creative with this pack. So it's not just a generic, here you go, I've made some patches in Serum or here you go, I've made some audio inside the computer. I've really gone to town. Even some of the bases I was running through some of TB's gear, um, making the use of like some of his amazing hardware. It's been a really hard process to get this pack finished. It's taken months to finish this pack, but it was well worth it. You know, I will use these sounds in my own music. So if you want to grab a copy, feel free. And the link's in the description. So thanks for watching. Big up, Rich. And uh, yeah, get your contact out. <laughs>